looking around. Some of these little trees here are, um, whatchamacallit, aspen trees. They're kind of whitish, but not as, not as white as the uh, birch. Here's a birch here. It's a little papery looking for a gray birch. Um, still might be gray birch. There's also a possibility that these could be the, uh, the European birch. Um, got some leaves on the ground here. That's basically the shape of a gray birch leaf though. So I'll stick with gray birch for now, but there's always a possibility I could be mistaken. There's a very deer munched pine tree. I don't believe this is a red pine. Red pine normally has longer needles and the needles, if you fold them over, see that one just crushed. Red pine needles, you, you fold them, they'll start to bend and then all of a sudden they'll pop. Um, these all seem to be white pine. Are you a red pine? I'm not sure what you are. Yeah, a bundle of two. If I bend you over, what do you do? Hard to do this one-handed. Take a needle, get it started. And nah, he seems to be just bending. So I'm not sure. But yeah, I was actually looking for a couple other things out here. I'm not really seeing, but uh, some small golden rods, another type. You can tell by the, the fuzziness. That right there is more of the um, wintergreen or tea berry. And like I said, it's got very red leaves. There's more sunlight here. So it's it, the leaves turn red in winter. And obviously you can't smell or taste them through the video, but they've got a distinctive smell like bubble gum. Because that was the original flavor for bubble gum. There's also this guy here. Well, he's only got two leaves there, but this guy here, trailing along the ground with the the roughness and that, should have groups of three. Although, like that one's just got two. That's another dewberry. One that likes a little bit drier than the one growing in the swamp. Oh, I'll see what else I can find. Okay, this is, guy's had a lot of deer munching on him, you can see. But he's got kind of long needles, kind of looks like it might be a red pine. Not that guy back there, that's a, that's a white pine. But this guy right here, and if I can find a good bundle, well, that one does have two. Yeah, it is a red pine. Let's see, if I get this going and I bend it, no, because it folds over. But I saw some, at least, in bundles of three. Yeah, you can see pretty good there, even though that's... No, oh, man, that's two bundles of two. Might be mistaken. Eh, I'm not sure who, what he is. Doesn't have that clean break like a red pine, but... It's hard to tell when they're small and half munched by deer what they are. Um... Moving on, interesting hummocks of moss over there. But this is one of the other guys I was looking for. I see a lot of these guys, mostly because I travel weird places. I used to do a lot of looking for snakes, so I'm in these drier places a little bit more. But this guy right here, I believe it's pronounced Epigea repens. This guy here, he's got sort of a little bit of a fuzziness or a roughness to the leaves. We call it trailing arbutus or arbutus, depending on who's pronouncing it. And it tends to like these sort of dry, 
not real, really open. It's not like they, they'll be out where it's really hot and sun-baked, but they'll be like on the edge of a dry sun-baked clearing, kind of like this where they're under these little saplings. But then right over here on the trail, it's pretty pretty open and, and dry. Kind of see where I'm at, this little sunny spot. And there's where it is off to the side. There's actually a lot of little patches of it around here. Just not seeing that much of it at the moment. Um, a lot of leaf litter on the ground, burying, things like that. I've heard it's very rare in Pennsylvania. In a book I read recently, but... Uh, like I said, I seem to find a lot of it, but then again, being more of a generalist, I tend to wander in weird places looking for weird things. Maybe I'm finding things other people aren't. And these things right here, these are more of the, uh, the aspen trees. Big stand of aspen here in between all the pines on this sort of knob I'm on. So... Moving on, heading back to the car. Um, back on the game land road here. There's a really neat patch over here of ground pine. And this is the ones that are more finger branchy looking. And then here's a whole bunch of that trailing arbutus. And right there, hot damn, under a gray birch instead of under a pine tree I uh, see right there is another one of those uh, spotted evergreen or pipsy siwa or some people call them prince of pine um, I think it's chimophila something or other macalata maybe I don't know still a little touch and go on the Latin sometimes and over here it's dry right now but this is a nice big pile of lichen and you know for kind of a waste area along a dirt road in a place that used to be an old strip mine it's actually kind of neat a lot of neat things right in one spot here I'll back up a little bit that's actually a pretty nice sized patch there there's a little bit more of it over here, and you know, there's a lot of it just been all over there. A little bit of sun, a little bit of shade. Huge, huge. Walking around a little bit, a lot of the, the lichen and everything else. Unique environment here. Not one of a kind by any stretch, but very unique. You can see it continues along this ridge, both directions, so. Cool. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but like right on the other side of that ditch is where I parked my truck, so. Almost back to the starting point. I just wanted to point out before I walked off that a little bit of this uh, trailing arbutus is red. Uh, fairly common trait among things that stay green over the winter is that reddish tinge is kind of like a uh, sunscreen for the plants. Okay left side of the roads game lands right side of the road is posted as you can see from that yellow sign up there but just wanted to show there's more of the environment with the, the same trailing arbutus and other associated plants all along that hillside as well as the hillside over there I was just not rare in this location at least and I guess I found where they've been dumping deer uh, no antlers though unfortunately um, not like I'd mount them on my wall but they're good for making knife handles and things um, a couple years ago they dumped some here and brings a lot of bear around the bear will drag them 50 yards back um, 
but at any rate this is this marshy area down here um it's kind of flooded i don't want to get up to my ankles in this stuff again but uh yeah, maybe something dammed it up it looks more flooded than normal but this place here also had sphagnum though well, i think the sphagnum i wanted to show you is submerged right now because those trees are normally growing on dry land <laughs> um, and you can see the the rocks in those trees up there that's where i was looking at the trailing arbutus and the lichen and such right up on top of that so gives you some perspective and yeah something's been gnawing on the the deer down here um probably not the bear bear drag them way in the woods that's how you know it's bear coyote don't pick up something that weighs 100 pounds and drag it 100 yards but uh yeah nothing really useful too much on them unfortunately um this guy did have antlers apparently somebody took the antlers but uh or they got broke off when he got hit by a car this tends to be where they uh usually different places they'll have little dumps where they throw the the, the road kills that they clean up off the side of the road and leave it for the animals um If I was a bear hunter, that's what I would look for. <laughs> Be brutally honest, because they do bring in the bears. Um, it's a new little washed out hole here. Uh, I don't see any signs of life. See that tree root kind of barking over, and you can kind of follow it back a little looks kind of like it should belong to a uh, yellow birch but I'm not seeing one in that direction I'm seeing a maple so looks can be deceiving on the the roots especially you can see we're getting back towards the pininess and it kind of opens up where the trail is up there and you can almost sort of half-ass see the parking lot from here but more of the red pine i was starting to get worried when i couldn't find one where the needles broke i was like maybe these are austrian pine and i'm mistaken because they they look somewhat alike and they do plant a lot of austrian pine in certain areas but uh for, the reddish bark usually gives it away um yeah a little bit a little bit of a look at that pond from a little bit farther back as it's usually not flooded that much don't know if there's beavers around here or just a tree fell down blocked it off or maybe a, a landslide from the the bluff on the side there not sure this is upstream from the other sort of wetlands i was wandering through so it's all connected and uh I'm going to wander back to the car and I'll start the camera again if I find anything interesting. Just another little clump of the, uh, the spotted winter green. He is growing kind of in an opening where there's uh, white pine next to him.